This is what we call flying by the seat of our taints. Will Keys is my co-host. I am Brandon Perna. This is a podcast about NFL football, specifically, mostly the Denver Broncos. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about opening weekend for the USFL because Will and I watched some, not all of it. Uh, We managed to recap it on the That's Good Sports channel. Uh, Today, though, after we talk USFL, maybe a little Russell Wilson, uh, we're going to try and figure out who the best player available will be for the Broncos at pick 64. And not overall best player available, but best player at one of the positions of need. And we're going to we're gonna get there through some consensus draft big boards, uh, some mock draft simulators. We're not doing mock drafts. I'm just using it to get to see which of these simulators uh, projects which guys will be available. And what I'm learning is the results vary. Uh... Uh, Will said right before we started that this might be one of the most unpredictable drafts in history. Based on uh, what I'm learning, I think you might be right. So we're going to do all of that today. But first, have you tried... Damn it. Hold on. My coffee, Bench Warmer Brew! Oh, BenchWarmerBrew.com. Go buy my delicious coffee. It's so good. I drank uh, 10 cups of it today so far. And I might not, I might not be done. The I day is young. Uh, also, DraftKings Sportsbook sponsors this podcast. Use code DNVR when you sign up at DraftKings. DNVR. You got NBA playoffs to bet on right now. Um, Okay, Will. <clears throat> First, let's talk about the USFL. Uh, what was your takeaway from opening weekend? I I really enjoyed the first game. Yeah, it was good. I thought that was a pleasant surprise. I think uh, the league was lucky to get a close fairly high scoring game. I think they scored a combined 52 points, which is pretty good. Um, (laughs) I don't know if they were thrilled when the generals took out Luis Perez, who was, who was kind of dealing and then ran the ball 24 times only to lose. Yep. Um, But that was a fun game. That was a fun game. I thought based on that, uh, you know, that initial opener that we'd get more fans showing up. That was obviously not the case in the in the three later games, but you know it was Easter. Um, it was Easter for the second and the third game, and then the fourth game got postponed to Monday yeah. night. I guess it would be Monday night in Birmingham, Alabama. So we'll see if they if it if attendance bounces back. Um, but my biggest takeaway, I guess, is that Paxton Lynch really, really isn't good at football. Oh man, it was. <laughs> It was rough. Uh, I was really hoping he would do something. And he got an opportunity because uh, Shea Patterson was playing fine. Um, It was kind of like when Brock Osweiler got pulled a little bit for uh, Peyton. There's just some fumble (laughs) step happening, happening. And some were on Patterson. Some was like bad snap. But it was like Jeff Fisher's like, let's just change it up. I think maybe Patterson threw a pick. I can't remember. Um, Then Paxton came in. He fumbles. Does he recover the fumble or did he lose it? No, he lost it. He lost it. He scrambled once and then he threw just an atrocious interception. And then Patterson came back in and played pretty well. Uh, So it's like it's like we watched the end of Paxton Lynch's career, like for sure. Yeah, for like the fourth time. (laughs) For the fourth time. Yeah, I mean, uh, that one interception too, it wasn't like not all interceptions are created equal. That was one of the worst interceptions a quarterback can throw. He was really late on an out route, and he threw it to the wrong shoulder, 
it, yeah. it was basically a layup uh, for the for the corner for the corner will likely yeah as in you know uh, we already made that joke but Paxton will likely not return yeah. to the starting lineup <laughs> every every time I hear will likely I think of you will it's a it's a good name um, I like it I, I hope he um, I hope he eventually makes it to the NFL so we can will keep likely making jokes. <laughs> It's kind of a, it just, they write themselves basically, but Paxton really bad. I thought the second best quarterback might've been, you know, Clayton Thorson actually looked pretty good. He was, he's kind of got, you know, two degrees of separation from, I guess one degree of separation from Paxton Lynch. I don't know how that works because he was Trevor Simeon's successor at Northwestern. Ooh. So, you know, the old Trevor Simeon tree, uh, sprouting once again yeah and another bronco quarterback kyle sloter he also uh played and honestly didn't look that great uh i was hoping to see more from sloter but like he was he had like a stretch and a lot of these what i noticed and to be fair to all the quarterbacks in the usfl i think the biggest thing is like these guys just joined the team roughly a month ago so yeah. They've been practicing yes. together for a short time. Uh, this is the first game action they got. I think they did like a basically like a couple scr- like a scrimmage game for each team, essentially. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I want to give them a couple weeks to get in rhythm with their offense, the new head coach, and then see if somebody sort of starts to emerge as a really good quarterback. And Jordan Tayamu played pretty well, but they didn't utilize his legs, I thought, for the Bandits. And that's kind of what made him interesting when he was with the Battle Hawks, which got him a gig, uh, or at least like a shot in Kansas City. So the quarterback play is like the one thing that sticks out is just not being nearly as good as the NFL. Yeah, there's also the caveat, too, that um, one of the stories that came out other than um, Devion Smith getting cut over ordering a slice of pizza was that the quarterbacks were really complaining about the chip, the computer chip in the football, which made oh, the, the football one that measures like five, the distance. Right, right. So it made the football about five or six ounces bigger, which uh, really makes a huge difference. Oh, Kenny Pickett would be horrible in the usfl well it it does make the ball uh i don't know if it makes it bigger but it makes it heavier i I guess it makes it who which quarterback has the weakest arm then um i think teddy might be in the running eddie bridgewater wouldn't be able to throw it 10 yards (laughs) (laughs) yeah um i I think uh yeah chad pennington would would really be out of luck Drew Brees' his arm would just fall off right now if he tried to throw a USFL ball. Yeah, 2015 Peyton Manning. The ball oh. might just take his arm off completely. Huh. So maybe it's just a matter of getting used to that football a little bit is what you're also saying. Might be getting used to it. Maybe the USFL helps them out and either installs a lighter chip or takes the chip out altogether. I think – um, if you're weighing your options as a startup league, you would trade uh, better quarterback play for you know cool analytics and, and cool graphics and all that crap that is fun Accurate but unnecessary. Measurement of first downs. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's great, but the NFL is fine without it because the the quarterback play is so fun to watch. Yeah, no, I agree. No it's, one's tuning in because you know they have to bring the chains out, right? Yeah, yeah. No, that's <laughs> they they figured out how to do it. Like they've got a system that works. Maybe it could be a tiny bit better and maybe it can help speed up the game a tiny bit, but the trade-off's not worth it. Uh offensive line play a little dicey as well. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, like everything just it's it felt like the least impressive debut of the spring well i don't know the aaf wasn't great 
Um, but like the XFL, I felt like was strong and right away it kind of felt like PJ Walker was going to be a star. Like you're like, yeah. Oh shit, this guy might be really good. And I'm not sure the USFL had anybody really like that from week one. Um, hopefully though, I, I think week two will be more important now that everybody's got a game under their belt and, uh, we'll see if like, even because there's only 100 yard skill player and that ah oh shit who was it Randy Satterfield yeah Satterfield he was the only guy uh, receivers running backs that got 100 uh, I think the guy who came in for Perez had 99 rushing yards the quarterback yeah uh, DeAndre Johnson yeah something like that so you need a running back to kind of go off or a receiver to go off. And there were some great catches. There was a handful of, you know, yeah. solid throws, but especially in the first game. Yeah. So I'm, I'm mostly excited to see week two. And I think the way we do the recap for this next episode, will is a feature game. And then we best and worstify the other three. I think um, that is a great idea. Um, it is obviously very weird having eight teams, and so they're going to play each other a lot. Um, yeah. But I think it's going to make for something interesting. I Did it, like, shock you that the, the field held up after four games in one weekend? No, That's but... The one thing that kind of concerned me about playing all the games in one location, which I think was a great move for the first season to save money. Yeah. But um, kind of bizarre. I mean, it I might... hope it does hold up. Yeah, it might be hard to get people who aren't fans of Birmingham to watch the other teams. Now, there's yeah. also bad weather on Easter Sunday, so I think the attendance will look better next weekend. It's like 10 bucks to go to the game. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I would go check it out if it were closer. So, yeah, if I lived in Birmingham, Alabama, yeah. which I did but the, not. The attendance doesn't matter. It's like people watching on TV because that's where they're going to make all the, they're going to make all their money. And if they pr can prove they can make money and keep people watching on television and they get a second season, then these teams can play in their cities and, you know, take the time to build, build up fan bases, expand uh, but, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So got, yeah. they got, um, I think they got 3 million 3 combined 5. viewers. Because they simulcast the first game, which I think was a smart move. Yeah. Um, they played it on NBC and Fox. Like, and I think they ended up getting more uh, viewers than some of the NBA playoff games. Whoa. Uh, yeah. Which I don't know if that's totally surprising, considering the first round of the NBA playoffs, save for the the one Celtics Nets game, it's kind of it's kind of lame. Yeah, so it did. Uh, yeah, it did more than – it was below Nuggets, Warriors, Raptors, Sixers, T-Wolves, Grizzlies, but it did better than uh, Jazz Mavericks. <laughs> Which, you know, obviously Jazz Mavericks isn't, um, you know, the marquee matchup of the weekend, but I think that's a good start. If I have a son, I'm going to name him Jazz Maverick Perna. I think it's uh, – I think it's a great name. Jazz Maverick. Ooh, man, <laughs> that's a that's a nice name. How about uh Dirk Donchick Perna? <laughs> no. Dirk Diggler Perna. Nope, he'll be way too small to hold <laughs> yeah. either of those names. <laughs> be ironic. Yeah. Um Dirk, all right. Dirk Stockton. We'll see what happens week two of the USFL. Um I'm glad it's here though. I'm glad it's here. Yeah. I think there's a curiosity factor. Uh, I know for sure the breaking point will be like once you and I learn most of the players, like once we know who they are, if the league survives after that moment, then that's a big moment. Because I feel like as soon as I started to have a grasp on the AAF and the XFL, I was like, oh yeah, I know who these receivers are. I know the running backs maybe a defensive player too. I'm not looking up every single dude every time I'm trying to, uh, mm -hmm. you know, figure out who they are. Um, that's when the leagues break as soon as I, I learn it. So once I learn this one, 
if they make it past that, it might succeed. Also, the USFL website, like for the players, they just have their first initial for their yeah. fucking name. Like, put their full name on there. Don't assume name I'm going to know too. who Jay Johnson is or, you know, T. Adams or whatever. Give me the whole name because writing the fucking recap, I spent a lot of time just trying to figure out the first name of all these guys. It's not yeah, like you know they got to make those the box scores. They got to make the players. Um, they got to add hyperlinks. That would make yeah. our jobs a lot God. easier. Come on. All right. Here we go. Russell Wilson, baby. Every week we're going to talk about Russell Wilson. Now, I saw Bobby Wagner on Rich Eisen. Uh, I think just yesterday. Mm -hmm. He, They were talking about his free agency uh, experience, and he's representing himself, and he you know, thought he was going to stay in Seattle until <laughs> – about a week before Russell Wilson was traded, Russell Wilson started asking Bobby Wagner if he'd be interested in coming to Denver. And Bobby's like, that's when I realized Russ was gone and that <laughs> my time was probably done. Um, Denver didn't pursue Bobby Wagner, uh, but I like that Russell Wilson was trying to recruit him. And that was a big benefit of having Peyton Manning. And maybe down the line that pays dividends because I think Russ will be active in trying to get players to come play for the Broncos. Now that's going to depend on how much the Broncos pay Russell Wilson and fully guaranteed money, because I think that's going to be like the next big thing that we talk about with Russ outside of actually playing football. Mm -hmm. But then I saw a friend of the show, Dave Damashek had an interview with David Carr and Derek Carr's brother. Talking about Devontae Adams going to the Raiders. <laughs> David Carr uh, basically said he knows some stuff about Aaron Rodgers that he shouldn't say, so he didn't. Um, but also that the impression he got from the situation was that Rodgers was looking out for himself and himself only. And that was another reason uh, Devontae Adams did not go back to the Packers. Also, that Adams and Carr have wanted to play together since, uh, you since know, splitting up outside together. of Fresno State. <laughs> yeah, outside of Fresno. And that Adams was going to go to uh, play with Derek Carr a year or two ago, but, you know, the Packers made him an offer he couldn't refuse or some shit like that. But I just thought it was interesting that – you know, Rogers hyped up Devontae Adams verbally, but when it came time to maybe divvy up the money or make some room for Adams, Rogers was like, nah, I'm maxing out what I can get. And that sort of led to the breakup there. My point being, as somebody who has through the whole process wanted Rogers, said he wanted Rogers. Every week that goes by, I'm just a little bit happier that the Broncos have Russell Wilson. That was my point. Yeah, I mean, this is who Aaron Rodgers is and has always been. He's a me-first guy. He's not a team-first guy. Um, he always looks out for number one, and uh, that's why I've never wanted him on my team, uh, to be honest. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've never had any interest in him. I was uh, I was on the, the Russell Wilson bandwagon from day one. Uh, I wanted to draft Russell Wilson back in 2012. John always said, no, you're getting Brock Osweiler. Mm -hmm. um, but I was patient for 10 years, and you know my dream finally came to fruition. Uh, I've never been an Aaron Rodgers guy. I haven't been all that impressed with his play recently. Um, and he chokes in the playoffs, whereas Russell Wilson uh, always gets it done. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, like – I think if you're going to complain about your lack of receivers, which has been a fair, you know, uh, a fair yeah. gripe for him recently, um, you got to put your money where your mouth is a little bit yeah, and give him a little room, you know, just a little bit of room because that's what older veteran quarterbacks do. That's what John Elway did. Helped him win a Super Bowl. Peyton Manning did the same thing. Helped him win a Super Bowl. Tom Brady does it every year because his uh, wife has enough money to the point where it doesn't matter. Also, the, uh, he scams people uh, with the TB12 method, so he's got plenty of uh, revenue from that. 
Uh, but yeah, you got to, at a certain point in your career, you have to make the choice. Um, am I trying to maximize my salary every year or am I trying to maximize my ability to win a Super Bowl? And Aaron Rodgers clearly, uh, you know, that's fine. That's okay. Uh, but it's not going to make the Packers better this year. You know, having no. Alan Lazard as your number one guy and Sammy Wat- Watkins will see what they get out of him. Uh, but he really better hope that <laughs> the Packers nail these two picks in the draft. Yeah. Otherwise, um, you know, his, his complaints about not having anyone to throw to are only going to uh, – it's only going to get worse from here. Yeah. And that – I mean, that's – the funny thing is – Russell Wilson's a, a team guy. He says all the right things. But I think he's very similar in that when it's time for his contract, he's going to ask for all of it to be guaranteed because of Deshaun Watson. Mm-hmm. And he's going to want to be the highest paid. He can prove me wrong. You know what I mean? But I don't think he'll ever, I don't think he'll get the criticism for it because of the way he portrays himself. You know what I mean? Versus Rogers. Yeah, who kind of portrays himself as the guy who is just going to? No do one's surprised, want. right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but also, I think like moving forward, if quarterbacks, the elite ones, are given big, fully guaranteed contracts, it's just going to be the norm. And mm-hmm. um, the Chiefs are going to—they look smart right now because, and the Mahomes deal was crazy at the time, but like the guaranteed money is different and it'll be on par with everything else and maybe at some point like Mahomes and them change that but uh I'm curious to see how this situation goes with Russ when they do give him a contract and I believe the Broncos will like probably dur I feel like it's going to happen during the season next year but the only way that changes is if Russell Wilson plays bad, right? <laughs> uh, and like, yeah, how bad would he have to play to happening. scare George Payton? <laughs> it would have to be pretty bad. It would have to be pretty, pretty bad. Yeah, yeah I, I see it happening as soon as ownership uh, is oh. resolved. I yeah. think once uh, Daddy Walmart gets here and is able to open that checkbook a little bit, we can dig into that. 70 billion and um i think obviously the best time to extend your quarterback if he's good is right now an oh. even better time would be like yesterday because you know every every new quarterback just about becomes the highest paid player in nfl yeah. history yeah um you don't have to be the best quarterback that's just how it works matthew stafford Derek carr they're all the highest paid players in nfl history patrick mahomes uh, Wentz and Goff were pretty high when they got their deals. Yeah, they were all, uh, you know, they were all um, paid very handsomely. But the thing that's really gonna, um, that's really going to alter the market going forward, I think, like you alluded to, is Deshaun Watson getting a fully guaranteed contract. Oh, yeah. And if someone like Deshaun Watson can get, you know, two hundred plus million dollars guaranteed for a guy that. Um, you know, narrowly avoided jail time. You know, yeah. Russell Wilson's Russell Wilson does not, you know, schedule shady massages. He spends his free time uh, visiting sick children in the hospital. Yeah. He's like, first so, day I was in Denver, I went to the kids' hospital. Uh, yeah. <laughs> where's my fucking money? So if you can't guarantee his money. contract fully, then uh, you're out of luck. And I don't think, I don't think his play is ever going to decline. Like, Russell Wilson, he works too hard. He, he works too hard. He elevates the guys around him. And the only thing I think that um, makes him worse is his offensive line. And I think the Broncos have a competent enough offensive line where he's going to have time to sit back and, and work his magic a little bit. So I, I think obviously you can't pay anyone – 70 million dollars a year yet but whatever the price tag is when the time comes uh it's not going to bother me no 
And like I think 33 to 37 age wise for the quarterback is their prime. Yeah. Uh, maybe some of them fall off athletically a little bit in that time, but it's more than compensated for based on their mental uh, acumen for the game by that point. And Wilson's like a guy who works as hard as Peyton Manning, as hard as Tom Brady, but is way more athletic than you could combine all of Peyton Manning and Tom Brady's athletic gifts. And maybe that would equate to Russell Wilson, <laughs> but like they figured out how to play the game differently. So right. I think Russ is getting in that area where hopefully working with Hackett, he kind of has that same sort of mental presence uh, that, you know, combined with this athleticism carries him to like, Age 35, 36, he's people like, oh shit, maybe he actually gets two MVP votes. You know what I mean? Maybe he gets three MVP votes, maybe four. I don't want to go crazy, but maybe five MVP votes for Russell Wilson at age 35. I predict that within the next two years, he will garner multiple MVP votes. Ooh. It is sad. It is sad, and it's very dumb that Bobby Wagner has more career MVP votes than Russell Wilson. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh I don't know. It's interesting. He's but it's gonna, hard. It's Wilson's hard to gonna shatter the curse. He's gonna get MVP and win Super Bowl as quarterback. I think the time has come. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's a, that's another thing, is like who cares if you win MVP now? I mean, the last yeah. twenty two guys to win it, they didn't win the Super Bowl. Nope. Um Speaking of winning, hey, DraftKings Sportsbook, you could win, especially if you want to bet on NBA playoffs. Uh, you can get in on this first round action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. This week, new customers bet $5 on any team to win and get $150 in free bets instantly. You win no matter what. All DraftKings Sportsbook customers can also bet on NBA hoops with same game parlays. Uh, also, each day of the first round, get a risk-free bet up to $10 if your same game parlay does not hit. That's what we call risk-free, baby. Um, You can download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use code DNVR, DNVR, DNVR. Bet $5 on any NBA team to win their game during the first round of the playoffs and get $150 in free bets instantly. That's promo code DNBR, DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Uh, Got to be 21 or older, Colorado only, new customers only, minimum $5 deposit. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. I just wonder if the Nuggets will win any games against the Warriors. Poor Jokic. Poor, poor Jokic. Yeah, it feels like they ran into a juggernaut at the wrong time. And yep. um, if you're not enjoying the Nuggets, though, you can always watch the Colorado Rockies, who are currently 8-3. and three. Whoa, go Rocks! Let's go. Yeah. Um, hopefully they've swept the, the Phillies by the time you guys are watching this or listening. Listen, listen with your ears. Watch with your eyes. All right, we're going to try to figure out who the Broncos can get at 64. Uh, let's see here. That's a, a late pick. Now we already did a mock like a week or two ago. I can't even remember. Yep. Um, we're doing a draft trades episode. Will you are predicting the Broncos, uh, package a bunch of picks to trade back up into the first. Yeah. To select an edge rusher. Uh, when I first read you insert that into the script, I was like, you, you crazy. Will. You Am crazy. I? And the reason I say that is because the Broncos do not have a lot of picks. They have few, very few picks in 2023. So I'm thinking they. But they might so, have more picks than they have roster spots. Right now is what you're you saying. Know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's fair. I don't think so, all these guys are going to make the team. Now. <clears throat> I think their biggest need after really thinking about it is edge. It is edge. Yeah. Um, you could argue tackle, 
So if they package that up, uh, maybe they can grab what's this guy? Boye Mafe? Boye Mafe? Boye Mafe from Boye Minnesota. Mafe. Arnold Ibikiti? Ibikiti? <laughs> Ibikaiti. Ibikite. Ibikite. Yeah, sure. One of those? Why not? Um, I'm looking at the uh, I'm looking at the CBS Sports Top 100, and yeah, Edge I think is interesting because if someone were to fall, I think if yeah, Florida State's Jermaine Johnson were to kind of inexplicably fall a little bit, yeah, which I don't think is likely, it. but it's always possible because it's people are. Possible. People don't know very much about this draft at this point. It's it's hard to predict, um, but you could see them trying to make a play if he got into the danger zone a little bit. Um, I think I don't think you can roll uh, really rule out corner either. Like if someone like Trent McDuffie from Washington, who's you know going to step in and be an elite nickel corner in the future. I think if he were to fall a little bit. Uh, that would be something to look at. We know that George Payton loves to to take corners in the draft. I don't think people would be super excited about that. Um, if Derek Stingley were to fall, and I, I know that's a possibility, then that's something to look out for as well. Jordan Davis out of Georgia, Andrew Booth, the corner out of Clemson. Uh, and then you got tackles like, you know, if, if Bernard Ryman – the, the German fella from Central Michigan, if he were – I don't even think he'd have to fall. I think that would just be right in the perfect area. Um, and you're talking for the trade-up at the end of the first. Yeah. For these guys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ryman, uh, he's got to get past the Chargers, I think. Um, and... Do the Chargers want to spend another pick on a tackle right now? They could. I think they have a huge tackle. I think they have a big need at right tackle. So you see them taking a tackle right there. Um, sorry. I plugged a hard wire into my internet and this fucking stream yard still trying to tell me my connection's unstable. That's okay. Bull crap. I- I I see I don't know. I could see the Chargers saying screw it. We're going to try to score the most points in the league and and drafting Jamison Williams. Out of oh, yeah. Alabama they could take a receiver. They could take a tackle. I I do kind of get I really hope the Chargers don't end up with Trey McBride somehow. That would really kind of scare me. Ooh. Yeah. So I don't like that right. at all. <laughs> I mocked the, the first round in Pro Football Focus. They have the Chargers taking receiver Chris Olave at 17. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, Draft Network, damn it. They have the Chargers taking Devontae mm-hmm. Wyatt, interior defensive line. Yep. Um, see, the thing like with the Chargers is they don't have a second round pick. So that's true. I feel like they're at a good spot at 17. They can probably, it's going to depend on what happens in front of them. Either edge, I mean, sorry, either receiver or tackle, I think falls to them and they grab that there. Uh, Giving Herbert a crazy, another crazy weapon to work with is good, and giving Herbert better protection from the right side is good. Now, for the Broncos, picking over at sixty-four, <laughs> they they got a lot of needs listed here. Uh, Bengals take Trey McBride right before. Don't uh, like that. Chiefs take a corner. Cam Taylor Britt. And so in the draft network, 
the best players they have available are guys like Chad Mama, uh, Daniel Falalale, Falalale. I swear to God, I football players got to change their names to easier to read. To John names. Smith, if you yeah. have. Uh, a name that's hard to pronounce, and this is not racist. You need to change your name to John Smith immediately. John Smith. Uh, Leo <laughs> Chanel, linebacker. Josh Pascal, edge rusher. So there's a couple linebackers there. They also have Nick Bonito, edge, out of Oklahoma. Yeah. So that's a guy that I think there's some really different draft grades on. Uh, Pro Football Focus has an incredibly high draft grade for Nick Bonito. The Draft Network has him sitting at 78. The consensus uh, big board that I'm looking at has Nick Bonito as the 58th best prospect. So that's an edge player who I think there's a ton of upside to that let's just say the 58 range is kind of the consensus based on the consensus draft board here. They also mm -hmm. in the consensus have Chad Mama, Mama at 63, Leo Chanel at 64. I don't think linebackers that big of a need, but maybe those players are good enough that the Broncos just take them because timing wise, it works out. But the guy I would like to see based on my little research without them having to maybe make a move or where they just have to move up maybe a few spots in the second round is Nick Bonito. Do you have any information on Nick Bonito besides having a very easy name for me to say? Um, I like the fact that he's N-I-K, Nick. Yes. I think that's a uh, that's a Hard-hitting analysis. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you well, for that. Well, hold on, because his draft – uh, prospect page is loading so i have to stall a little bit um, <laughs> <laughs> i mean so nfl.com has him rated as will eventually be a plus starter i like that uh he's got the prototypical three four uh edge size and he runs a four five four forty yard dash it's pretty good um so i don't know i think he makes because a guy who intrigues me in terms of Drafting up in the first round was George Karloftis out of Purdue. Um, I think the problem being he's not uh, an incredible scheme fit, although I think a, a smart team will find a way to make it work. Um, but I'm not sure that's a guy, you, you know, you mortgage a little bit of capital to get up for. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, no, I like, I like Benito. Uh, it seems like he's a good run defender yeah. too, as well as being an edge rusher. And, you know, I, I think – uh, the Broncos lacked that a lot um, in terms of, especially opposite Bradley Chubb um, when Chubb was on the field. But, you know, Malik Reed struggled, obviously, um, against like read option, RPO kind of plays. So I think it's big to have a guy who can, um, who can do both. And the Broncos lost Stephen Weatherly just recently to the Cleveland Browns. And I thought he was a really good depth piece last year. So, oh, yeah. Um, I like this. I also think, and this might, you know, this might be a, a little bit of a hot take, but I would not be very surprised if the Broncos spent a day two pick on a wide receiver. Ooh, wow. I think it could happen. I think the Debo Samuel thing and and the the possibility of say Cortland Sutton or Tim Patrick saying, well, damn, like I, I see what these guys, you know, are making uh, post Devonte Adams, post Tyreek Hill. I think I want a piece of that and I'm going to hold out or what have you. Um, plus Jerry Judy, obviously you got the fifth year option on him, but he's not going to be here forever. You have to make a decision there. KJ Hamler, um, and also the fact that Jerry Judy and KJ Hamler are not necessarily the most durable guys on the planet. The Broncos ran into wide receiver depth issues last year. I think if a guy like, let's just say David Bell out of Purdue, who I really, really like, who's a great 
tackle breaker or a guy like John Mechie out of Alabama who, who's not going to play right away, but um, I think is, is developing after uh, a pretty bad injury uh, last season at Alabama. Or a guy like Sky Moore would be intriguing because we know that they like Caleb Ellaby, so they've probably been keeping an eye on Sky Moore as well out of Western right. Michigan. I it just I, I don't know if it's you know the most likely outcome, but it certainly would not surprise me to see them spend a day two pick because they have three, um, they have number sixty four, number seventy five, and ninety six. I could see one of those picks, maybe seventy five on a wide receiver in a really deep wide receiver class. No, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, you got to remember KJ Hamler's coming back from an ACL injury, right? Yep. And uh, Sutton had one two years ago. It took him a while to get going. It could take a while for KJ Hamler to get going. And it can also, for a guy who's, primary strength is speed like you don't know recovering from that injury if kj hammer will ever get back to being as fast as he was right like i think about like tyreek hill he's never he hasn't torn his acl as a pro right like what would happen to his crazy explosive skill set if that were to happen it's just like a big unknown so if there's any uncertainty there, uh, then yeah, maybe you're looking for, you know, a depth piece and a possible replacement piece for, uh, you know, Hamler or let's just say Judy doesn't work out. Say he just doesn't develop. It's a yeah. it's a bust. And I'm not saying that that's true, but uh, we're assuming that both of those guys are going to be great. And while there's a very good potential of that, it hasn't happened. And yeah. Maybe Sutton or Patrick has a really big year, and it's like this contract's dog shit. Give me more mm -hmm. money, and uh, you know the Broncos got to figure that out. And if they draft a guy they really like, then they can trade one of those two receivers. Yeah. And it, it just keeps some flexible. of the draft capital for twenty twenty three that they currently don't have. So you're not that crazy, Will. I conclusion. I don't know. I don't think it would be. I don't think a lot of people would be happy about it. Um, from the start, but I think it is a good way to plan for the future. Just yeah. knowing because you always want to be stocked at wide receiver with, with a guy like Russell Wilson, like you don't want him throwing to, uh, to bumps, like no offense to like, I don't know, David Moore or, or John Brown, but you don't want a David Moore, or John Brown situation <laughs> like last year. No, you want like, it's especially in the AFC West. Uh, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's a, it's an arms race, especially you know the Chargers uh, say they draft um, Jameson Williams, or God forbid they draft George Pickens, which would really terrify me. You just got to have, you know, you got to have a prospect ready to come up when the wide receiver and, and wide receivers like no one on the Broncos. I, well. <laughs> Jerry Judy might fall into that category, but Tim Patrick and Cortland Sutton are not, um, you know, they don't ruffle a lot of feathers. But these guys want their money, and if they don't get their money right away, then they tend to want to get out. And we're seeing that play out with Debo Samuel right now. Um, he's officially requested a trade since we started this podcast. Oh, really? Yeah, per, per ESPN's Jeff Darlington. Whoa. So people are now speculating – um, not if he is going, but where he is going. Wow. Where is this shit? Let me see it. The trade request came in more than a week ago, and the 49ers have been aware of Debo's feelings for a while. This is why there have been no talks. Ian Rappaport confirming Jeff Darlington. Wow. Debo. Interesting. Oh. Okay, I don't know why he would want to be traded. Um, I don't either. Maybe he doesn't believe in Trey Lance. <laughs> maybe he just uh, doesn't think the 49ers are going to pay him what he's worth. I don't know. It seems like 
they put him in Kyle Shanahan put him in the best position to succeed and now he wants to leave like I don't know if this is a smart move for Debo Samuel and that's like I think he's really really good what would you what would you give up for Debo if uh you're the Broncos will I did put it in the rundown and now yeah it's in, like a big story well it's complicated because you know it He's probably going to command a first round pick, but you don't have a first round pick this year or next year. So you'd have to trade a player. Um, I think Judy plus 64 and 75 and a late round pick as well. I don't know if that gets the job done, but. Um, that's probably what I'd be willing to part ways with. Uh, again, the 49ers might laugh you off the phone, but I, I don't know. I think Judy's a good asset to get back if you're the 49ers because, I don't know, I'd, I'd really like to see – I don't want to see it, but I think Jerry Judy would really thrive in a Kyle Shanahan offense. Yeah. No, I agree. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know what, what, what would you give up here. Is, but it I, would also like, solve the backup running ba- back uh, quandary. Oh, because you can give him uh, carries behind Javante Williams. Javante Williams, RB two, Debo Samuel. No, oh man, there's like you think about teams that could trade. Maybe the Giants would give up uh, one of their picks for him, although they've spent a lot of money on receivers. I just think Brian Dable would be interested in Debo. The Jets are a team he's been rumored to, and they definitely have the capital with the fourth and 10th pick. I can see the 49ers taking pick 10 from the Jets. Uh, the Texans pick 13. So oh, The Texans are just... I, the Texans were talking to Brees Hall, the running back out of Iowa State, uh, oh. this week. Oh, that is the most Texans thing too. Yeah, to spend a big pick on a running back when literally uh, almost every other position is a position of need. Yeah, and the Eagles got it. They've got capital to give up. They sure do. I yeah, I wouldn't mind that if I were the Eagles. 49ers, I mean, the Chiefs could give up both of their first-round picks and send, uh, I don't know, Juju Smith-Schuster to the 49ers. Um, I don't know. Interesting. I mean, you could also try to draft the next Debo Samuel in the first or second round and not pay him 25 to $30 million. And I think that is a little more prudent. Yeah. I don't think the Packers have the money to pay him. Yeah, that's interesting because I'm uh, looking at this retweet from Tom Grassi um, saying they do have the cap room right now to trade him, trade for him and extend him, but um, they'd have to do some serious restructuring and cutting to make it work, which I don't don't know. I don't know if that's what they want to do. I also don't know if he's like the prototypical Aaron Rodgers receiver. Not that he wouldn't work, but if you're trying to, I I want to find like Aaron Rodgers, basically Devonte Adams, like a, a really skilled route runner. Yeah. I don't know. That'll be interesting to monitor. Um, good thing it's in our draft trades episode that I should have up tomorrow on that's good sports. Anything else before we get out of here, Will? Make sure to tune in for the draft stream in eight days. Eight we're days. Be, live we're going to be parked coverage. at our computers for the entire first round, which um, rest assured will be excruciatingly long, especially without yeah. a Broncos pick. Um, so that'll be fun. I look forward to it every year. Uh, I love the draft, even if we're not picking. So, yeah, tune in next Thursday. And if you get your wish, maybe we will be picking in the first round, Will. Yeah, we need to sell the idea that it could happen at any time. Good. Hey, Even it could happen. All right. Uh, guns don't kill people. Oh, Russell Wilson kills people. <laughs>